So what's up, people? This is Robert Bassano. I just want to come back to you guys again to share some information with you. Um, I got to talking with Alice again. And Alice says, hey, you want to take another trip down the rabbit hole? I want to show you something else. And it actually involved a, a commercial I saw yesterday when I was watching CNN. I was watching Christian Amon Porge. He was talking about NATO. And then they went to commercial break, and this interesting NASA commercial came up. And what it showed was a picture of the Earth. You know, it was a an, an, uh, cartoon animation. And then they showed a picture of this cartoon animation of the sun. And then it started showing all kinds of information about the Earth and the size of it and the shape. Of course, they showed a globe and then they showed the sun. And then it went on to show how many Earths can fit into the sun, what's the distance of the sun from the Earth. And then it went... The video started to progress and it, sh it showed a comparison of how you could develop a perceptual understanding of how big the sun was versus compared to the earth. And they showed another picture of the front door of someone of a home saying that this is the sun. And then they peered into the keyhole. They zoomed all the way into the keyhole of the door to illustrate this is how small the earth is. And then the video ended with the words, got it? get it good and on the bottom it says source nasa so i'm like what the fuck was that a fucking flat earth me message was that saying hey we know what you guys are doing so we're going to put out counter information to make sure we keep everybody on target with regard to what the earth what we're telling them the earth looks like so i i, I went looking for this video couldn't find it on nasa's website couldn't find it on CNN's website at all. Couldn't find it on the internet at all. Typed in all kinds of queries. Nothing came up. And usually, you know, NASA puts that shit on their website where you can find it, you know, with regard to media inquiries and relations. So, you know, speaking to Alice, we, we go down deep in the rabbit hole, deeper than we've ever gone before. And I decided to type in source colon NASA. And lo and behold, all this crazy shit just popped up. You know, in the search. And I'm starting to see, you know, websites regarding coding, websites regarding source, open source code, autonomous systems and robotics, artificial intelligence. So I just started to go digging a little bit deeper, right? And then I stumbled across some crazy shit on this website, Code NASA. And the reason why I found this interesting, and again, I want everybody to understand that I'm not looking for information to, you know, support my belief. You know, I wanted to, I'm curious, you know, I'm into software programming, GPU, CUDA, you know, BlackBerry OS, Android, Red Hat Linux. And, um, and I know, you know, I know quite a bit about machine learning and AI and, and, and computer programming. So I'm thinking, okay, I saw a video the other day where a guy, Flat Earther, he put up a video, I think he's from Australia or, or, or London, and he made the insinuation that there was a possibility they had some sort of software program that he believed, whereby they could actually, they could take the footage from a high altitude plane, like a drone, we've all seen, They know that we know that they have those large um, Reaper and Predator drones, which NASA helped develop um, with Lockheed and Boeing. And they put these bad boys up at extremely high altitudes. They're completely autonomous, uh, stationary atmosphere over a non-rotating Earth. So I thought to myself, well, wait a minute. If you do have a picture of the Earth, then you can take that, that video, and then you upload it into the high-performance computer to have the supercomputer. And then you start creating all types of image processing, graphics, visualization. You just basically go from scratch with this whole thing. And then I stumbled across this. The QUIP, Quick Imaging Processing, on NASA's website, open source. QUIP provides an interactive environment for computing and presenting images and image sequences manipulating and storing arbitrary data and general scientific computing and plotting. The current release supports Unix-like operating systems tested on Linux and Mac OS, OS X and Apple's iOS mobile operating system GPU accelerating 
is supported with either CUDA or OpenCL, which I've been, I know both of those. There's a built-in support. So I'm thinking to myself, psychophysics? What the hell? Is it? Am I confirming? Is it possibly I'm getting ready to confirm that these videos are actually being put out? They're all artificial and a supercomputer is conducting all of this shit? Even the shit that they claim that's live? But wait till you see what more I'm going to show you. This is fucking incredible, people. Alice is taking me deep. Inventory system for lab equipment, worldwide options, uh, EO, EDOS, on Earth. I mean, look, this is all open source, people. You can go to all of this. And there's, there's a possibility you will be able to create exactly what NASA is creating if you have the computer memory and power to actually do it. But this is all of their open source software they're using. World View Design. I'm not even going to go there. This, this video is just basically to show you guys that this exists. Their disk repository contains the wireframes and designs for NASA's World View. This code was originally developed at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center for the Earth Science Data and Information Systems EDIS project. People, you got to go to this. This is code.nasa.gov. You have to see this for yourself. And for those of you out there who are interested in programming and software development and open source SDKs, this may be the holy grail, people. This may be it. This may be it, people. This actually may be it. You're going to have to see this for yourself. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Google Earth Offline Cache Preloader, Desktop Exploration Remote Terrain, Kepler Community Database. I mean, they're taking all the data, they're putting it up into a computer, and they're creating the, the, the computer-generated images and videos. They're doing the same thing. IPv6 socket manipulation for Python. Wow. Earth Data Search, Data Curtains. Core flight systems, data search, data storage, application version, file plotting tools, Python palorimetric radar beam blockage calculation. I mean, you know, to, to give them a little bit of defense, I, I'm going to say that, yes, they're using this to create simulations so they know what aircrafts are going to do, what space vehicles are going to do when they're in a specific environment. But if you wanted, if you couldn't really do this, but you could think of it and you can create it on a computer, that means you can make it look like it's fucking real. Because when you go all the way back up to the to the coding, psychophysics. Do we want even search to see what that is, people? Do we really want to see what psychophysics is? I mean, do you want to know? Because I want to know. I want to know what psychophysics actually entails. Okay? Psychophysics. Psychophysics. Let's go to... Let's go to study.com and academy. Again, I don't like looking at perception lecture notes. I don't like looking at Wikipedia. That's for people who are just lazy. So psychophysics. Have you ever wondered what happens when you eat a juicy watermelon? How does the grainy texture of that pink fruit get translated into the sensation of sweet? Or, okay, let's get going. Method of limitation. Limits. To measure obsolete threshold with the methods of limits, a researcher would present the stimulus in either or sending. Okay. This is just basically... We want to keep it simple, right, people? Okay, let's keep it simple. Psychophysics is the scientific study of the relationship between stimuli, specific and physical terms, and the sensations and perceptions evoked by these stimuli. The term psychophysics is used to denote both the substantive study of stimulus response relationships and the methodologies used for this, this study. Okay? That's psychophysics. So let's go back to where we were. So again, you guys see all of this. We're not going to go over all of it because this would be literally like a four or five hour video. 
but I wanted to show you this to, to, to illustrate there is a potential possibility all of this shit that you're seeing on video that you see the NASA does. I'm not saying a rocket, the rocket launches are not real, but what I am saying is this, is a lot of these launches that may be taking place at nighttime where there's nobody around to see them or they're not being publicized that they're happening, um, they could be computer generated images and fake launches. A lot of the launches that are taking place in front of the eyes of thousands of people who are standing around to see the launches those are real those are real launches or they could be fake launches who knows you know I'm not gonna say that they are fake launches but can't take out the possibility that all kinds of crazy ass noise that could be created to simulate what it sounds like to see to hear a rocket actually fire off because they actually can create these same sounds when they're doing rocket testing if you've ever seen the videos where they're doing rocket testing, they actually have the engine. They're firing it off to see what the what the capabilities are, how the rocket's performing, what the engine sounds like. And they're recording all these sounds. So when you see what you believe to be the space shuttle or some rocket a few miles away, away from you, and you see the launch taking place, but there's all these type of other vehicles and apparatuses around the launch site projecting sorts of images and light who's to say that that's not a holograph you're seeing and the sound that you're hearing is not actually coming from a real vehicle being launched but it's a sound being projected with very advanced speaker systems and sound systems that can project that type of sound and noise and that vibration okay these things are possible, people. If you don't think that they're possible and you've been to an actual launch and you say, yes, that was a rocket being launched, hey, I'm not going to argue with you on that. But what's happening when you're not there watching a the launch? You know, you might say, yeah, you talk to friends and this happened, but I need you to take this into consideration because psychophysics, image processing, graphics, you can, if Hollywood can do this, NASA can do it. Okay? Because that's who they learned it from. Thank you, Stanley Kubrick. So, we go over to the software catalog. They have actually a technology transfer program. Software catalog for 2015-2016. You can sign up, use your email, create an account. And um, basically, you can download the catalog. I've already downloaded and put it into my secure cloud. So, anybody want to know who it is, you can just get say, this is a U.S. government system. is authorized for use only. I actually signed up and I actually got the fucking document, to be perfectly honest with you. So I actually have an account. So, no, I don't work for the fucking government. So another thing I wanted to show you guys was this, the NASA World Wind. Okay, this is an open source platform, cross-platform, completely free. You can download this. And I was in the process of downloading it, and I'm going to do that right now. Okay, I'm going to accept. And it's going to give me the World Wind Java SDK 2.0. I'm going to download it and put it inside my folder and just let it go through its thing. We're going to see what that is later. I need to play around with it and see what it actually really is. You guys can go to NASA Worldwind, download it yourself, play around with it. Maybe we can share some notes, but it's 98.8 megabytes, so it's going to take a while. But let me keep, let's keep going here. So I found this paper, Aerospace Research Central. Now, you have to pay to get this. So I'm going to have to log into my university later and use my university account to actually access this document. But here's the interesting thing about the title. Moving Sphere Simulations Using the Chimera Grid Approach. Moving Sphere Simulations Using the Chimera Grid Approach. You need to research Chimera Grid Approach. Do that on your own, okay? But... I'm going to need to read this document to really come up with definitive results that they're creating this shit all through computer image processing because they have more than a dozen supercomputers around the United States and the world, okay? So this data and the way they're doing this, it's not happening from the United States. You can be guaranteed of that because the United States suffers too many cyber attacks for that information to be compromised for the whole fucking system to be crashed literally in a day okay in a day 
they would have to literally cut the cord to the fucking worldwide internet so that this couldn't be published by some hacking group. Okay? So let's go here. So I did, what I did was I did download this paper, High Resolution Aerospace Applications Using the NASA Columbia Supercomputer. So I've got to go through this, read this whole thing, but what's interesting about this, and I haven't read through the whole document, and I want you to understand something because there's been talk about, you know, there being potentially what is below is above. You know, there's waters in the ocean. We talked about a lot of things. There are people putting out videos saying that there's there's these lunar waves, and they now they're talking about there may not be actual any kind of electromagnetic waves or or or, or um, heat waves, but it could be actual some sort of fluid dynamic environment that everything may be in in the sky with regard to the sun, the moon, the space shuttle, the ISS, all of that. But what's interesting about this introduction, notice what they say, computational fluid dynamics, CFD techniques, have been developed and applied to aerospace analysis and design problems since the advent of the supercomputer. However, in spite of several decades of continuous improvements in algorithms and hardware, and despite the widespread acceptance and use of CFD as an indispensable tool in the aerospace vehicle design process, computational methods are still employed in a very limited fashion in the design process. The full potential of these methods in delivery, delivering more optimal designs and, and accelerating the design cycle has yet to be approached. Now, I want you to understand something. We, you don't have to be an aerospace or aer astronautic engineer or an aerodynamic engineer to understand that if you're designing an aircraft to fly in atmosphere, in a gaseous pressurized atmosphere, then you're going to put it into a wind tunnel. And you're going to create some sort of vapor trail where you, you'll be able to see the way the gases flow or the air flows over the wings of an aircraft and when the aircraft turns left to right pitch yaw you see how the air interacts with the structure of the aircraft now that's not fucking fluid dynamics fluid dynamics is exactly what they say it is you're using some sort of fluid composition source liquid they're using computational fluid dynamics techniques for aircraft testing and design which means that if they're doing that on a computer and they're doing it in a laboratory and inside some sort of facility where they're testing this then they're letting these fluids go interact with the with the aircraft vehicle which means because that vehicle is going to be going into the same environment they're testing it under fluid people fluid I'll leave it at that. Again, I need to do some more reading. You guys are seeing this for the first time just like I am, okay? So let's go to the overgrid. Now, to give you some clarity on what you're actually looking at, I'm going to show you what you're looking at. I found this. This is also a NASA website, okay? Let's see here. Yeah, it's people.nas.nasa.gov. It's people.nas.nasa.gov, okay? I mean, Alice is fantastic. She's been taking me so fucking far down the rabbit hole. It's unbelievable. So I found this, and it talked. I wanted to research what the Chimera Grid approach actually was. And yeah, this was put out version 2.1 in 2010. But let's just assume that this was something. This is an upgraded version of something that predates stuff that was being used before. Okay, so that's the assumption and presumption we can make because we don't have anything else to compare it to. So Occam's razor theory is the most logical conclusion is the most probable, right? Okay, Chimera Grid Tools Users Manual. So restrictions, read this before proceeding. Notices and disclaimers, read this before proceeding. Uh, let's see here what they say, read this before proceeding. Many modules in the software package have been developed under the DOD High Performance Computing Modernization Program. Um, it's called the Chis CHISI CFD4 Initiative. As a result, the following rules must be observed by the users of the software. Only U.S. citizens or permanent residents belonging to a U.S. organization are allowed to access 
allowed access to the software, foreign nationals are permitted. Well, oh, got the fucking cat out of the bag on this one. Hey, it's fucking open source. It wasn't a restricted website that I need to fucking log into. So you're going to put it out there. I'm going to fucking find it. I'm going to post it and let everybody know. U.S. citizens, <laughs> this is fucking crazy. U.S. citizens of permanent residents who would like to use the software must sign a software usage agreement form. In the past, a group leader branch chief can sign for the group. The current rules require a, a signature from everyone who has access to the software, including indicating that they understand restrictions imposed on the software. Source code must reside on secure facilities, password protection at a minimum, and be readable only by individuals that have fully executed a software user agreement. Software is not allowed to leave the organization. Well, that's too fucking bad because it's I already fucking got it. Whoop the fucking do. So I'm not saying I have the software, but here you go. It goes to contents, bugs, search for keywords, references. Uh, I don't. Well, here's a software request procedure. But let me get to the point here. You see all of this, how they can create the space shuttle. They create everything that they need to create. You know, testing air, you know, advanced aircraft. They see what happens to the aircraft. You know, flight dynamics. You know, just everything you could have been. Uh, possibly imagine when it comes to aerodynamics and aerospace engineering and what what interests me was this the overgrip right here's the overgrip so what I discovered going to this overgrid version 2.3 is this software program overgrid graphics window again I'm not trying to claim that this is what they're using to create the computer generated images I'm not saying that the space shuttle never went up into space which is not as far as we generally think it is all right people think the space is a vacuum and all this other jazz it's not no one goes into a vacuum I'm sorry to disappoint you I include you Globers but when you look at the main menu for this over grid version 2.3 you look at all the grid tools you can put you color code them uh, which means that this software program let's just say they needed to simulate this vehicle be going into space or they needed to create the background that this has launched and the lighting has to be a specific way because here's what I think is happening this is just me being hypothetical and theoretical on this if I wanted to create a video to show that I launched my own space shuttle from my backyard and I had access to the atmos the daily real-time atmospheric data that every news weather station has access to right from NASA uh, and I want you to understand the news that you watch on television the weather that they're forecasting they're getting all of that data from NASA they don't have their own Doppler systems. They don't. They can't pay for this. They they can't set these things up. They get them from the main sister station, and that sister station is is got an account with NASA, just like a bank. And they're getting all their data from NASA. So if I wanted to create this and I have this software, all I have to do is input. All I have to do is input all of the atmospheric data into the software program because remember it's open source okay it's open source and then when you combine the two programs you end up with the automated configurations or custom fit configurations so that the video or the simulation that's being conducted the certain the, the specific type of light and reflections will be visible on the vehicle themselves as as you believe it's being launched and going up into the sky and then when it gets to the darkness of space above 328,000 feet then things start to change and start to look a little bit funny okay but when you look at debris tracing solution hybrid grid components you look at this program again I haven't downloaded this yet so I haven't played around with it to know exactly how it actually works but from looking at this template I can tell you here right now I've actually seen 
a template like this in a um, aerospace systems engineering software program created for a uh, private drone maker I know I know of and he has something similar to this it's not identical but it's used for him it's used so he could design a s drones to do certain things to fly you know have certain capabilities and they factor in all of this okay they factor in all of this and when you look at the bottom of this template you start seeing some things okay and again if you're not a software designer programmer or coder you know and even if you're even if you are a programmer coder you don't have to be but when you look at some of the selections that are given here with regard to axes rotation centers you you have to punch in all of these codes um, you look at who knows what the rest of this does but I mean you're you're designing the aircraft for real-time situations right you have to program it in as though it's flying through the air. But in this particular case, they're using fluid, computational fluid dynamics. If you don't, if you're not sure of what that is, just go to NVIDIA.com and they'll show you video illustrations of what their computational fluid dynamics um, capabilities are with graphic processing units. Because this is used with GPUs. Everything's all visual. And if you know that everything they produce, NASA has to produce, is all based on graphic processing units, then that gives you the answer right there. That everything is based on visual frame of reference, recreation, and simulation of a visual environment, hence the term psychophysics. Stimuli. Giving you specific images, specific things that they've already pre-programmed in you, to identify as that has to be real no that has to be fake and the difference between flat earthers and globals is that flat earthers are really way outside the box thinkers and highly intelligent people i i'm not gonna say i'm gonna say that in a general sense but somehow some people have slipped through the cracks and they i don't know they're outside the box but they're not too far outside the box and uh they're you know who knows they they might want to be like a cat and jump back into the safety of the box which they believe is sitting on top of a ball spinning but not a here nor there so when you look at this program you start to put things together in your head thinking whoa wait a minute here yeah they're using this for computer simulation but this data is also being applied to real time that's how they get accurate in what they do, whatever it is they're doing, however the way they're doing it. 3D, OpenGL provides 3D graphics display. We can only see things in 3D or 2D, right? So when you look at all of this, you should start asking yourself, is this how they're doing it? And I believe this is how they're doing it. If we're going to stick to our claim that they're faking it, then here goes the proof that they're faking it. Because this is highly complex. They don't expect us to go looking for this. They don't expect us to find this. They don't expect us to have people within the ranks who can locate this, identify it, disseminate it, decipher it, and put it to use. They don't expect it at all. You see it for yourself. There it is, plain as day. So, I provided you with enough information to go do some searching. Start looking for yourself. Oops, sorry about that. People.nas.nasa.gov. That's the name of the website. Okay. What else did I wanted to show you? This is the paper that I showed you. We already looked at that. I showed you the NASA World Win. I'll have that posted up for you so you can check it out. I might not. You guys are just gonna have to do some homework on this. And I'm I've already downloaded the World Win, so I'm gonna check that out. But there'll be some more videos after this, so I can tell you what it is I'm discovering. What do we got? Oh, this is what I wanted to show you. This is the last thing I wanted to show you. This is what is this website? This website is software.nasa.gov. Okay. There's a technology transfer program I told you about. NASA. Listen, NASA has this program. Uh, NSA has this program, Department of Energy has this program, 
DARPA has this program. They all have it. The technology transfer program is basically tech that, you know, they've already declassified. It's out there. And now they want to see what people like us can do with it to create something more advanced than what they have. Okay? That's why they put this out there. All right? It's not some sort of propaganda or counter intel to, to really fuck up your computers and fuck your life up and create something that's going to kill a lot of people. They really don't know what they're doing and they need help. Okay? They really don't. They really need the help. Okay? We know that they're not bright people working for that organization. It's impossible. They may have you know masters and PhDs, but they're they're not the they're not the shiniest apples in the basket, people, because they're in the basket. We're outside the basket. So here you go. I wanted you to see this. General fluid system simulations programs, 6.0. So what I want to do is this. You see how they're using general fluid system. So when we talk about computational fluid dynamics, what does that look like to you? Does it look like some sort of air or air? Colored air, gas? No, it's not. It's liquid. Liquid fuel phase changes. Okay? They're using this same system to test the aerodynamics of aircraft, which means that they're going into the same environment that they're being tested in. And here we go. Look at this. I can actually request this bad boy. And I'm going to do just that. I am going to do just that. So let's see what we can do here. Let's do it. Let's do it together. Right, I got to create an account. So I'm going to create an account and I'm going to request this and then I'll get back to you guys. Okay. Other than that, it's been fun. You've got a lot of things to look into. Uh, hopefully you were exposed to something you've never seen before. But for those who are focusing on NASA and that is your only focus and you've developed some sort of really, how should I say, starker type of attraction for them I have to admit <laughs> I'm right there with you but I'm an observer on this whole thing but um, I think uh, this may be it people this may be what you might be able to use to prove to every global who's going to use anything from NASA to say ah, guess what I figured out how to create the same video NASA created and boom here you go and do a side by side and bada bing bada boom Goodbye, NASA. Take care, people. See you in the funny papers. I'll post another one maybe uh, over the weekend or next week. Take care.